but at the end of the day, it really is about being efficient and doing a lot with less, um, with labor, and mm -hmm. just overall, just being more efficient in, in general. So we hear that all the time. And when we think of sustainability, you know, I, I liken it to conservation. I really think that. I mean, we need to preserve what we have. And um, for beef production um, or cow calf operation or anybody, it's about making sure that um, I'm doing everything I can to be as profitable as I can be, but at the same time, I'm taking care of my herd. Um, and they take care of me now. Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister, and I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversations podcast, where we connect you with members of the beef industry who can help you build a more profitable operation. As you listen to each episode, be sure to set an intention for the show. What do you want to get out of it, and how do you want to use this information to make changes on your operation? If you're looking for more ranching resources outside of what's being shared on these podcast episodes, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. I'll send ranching information and podcast episodes straight to your inbox every week. In addition to that, you will also receive a free PDF with 22 ranch management tips from the gurus who have been on my show. The link to sign up for that is in the show notes. With that, let's hear from our guests today and discover how we can improve the beef industry and our own unique cattle operations. Well, Ray, I know it's been one good but long week here at CattleCon in New Orleans. For those listening, it is Friday, right? It is Friday? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Friday morning. And Ray, I know you have been at the Gallagher booth. You've been doing different speaking opportunities mm -hmm. to people to, or this week, all this week, really. So I'm just going to, I really just want to hear, you know, what are you sharing with attendees and what's kind of that topic and area of focus for you? Well, for us, um, it's been sustainability and looking at all of our equipment and what do we do right with what we sell and how do we we apply that to sustainability and the beef production industry and uh, it's been really fun to talk to people coming through the booth and you know just hearing their story and you know how does it really relate to them and you know they see things that we do and they're saying oh what is this and what is that and that's so cool I mean and everybody is just their minds are exploding about all the technology that's coming about but at the end of the day, it really is about being efficient and doing a lot with less, um, with labor, and mm -hmm. just overall, just being more efficient in, in general. So we hear that all the time. And when we think of sustainability, you know, I, I liken it to conservation. I really think that. I mean, we need to preserve what we have. And um, for beef production um, or cow calf operation or anybody, it's about making sure that um, I'm doing everything I can to be as profitable as I can be, but at the same time, I'm taking care of my herd, um, and they take care of me now. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, it's about animal welfare. It's about taking care of my family, and it's about my kids coming back from school and learning and, and being excited about coming back mm -hmm. onto the ranch, and that's, that's been a real... Uh, joy for us to really talk about with folks as they come through the booth. This show has always been just the, the pinnacle of uh, excitement for us and you know the people are just amazing and all like I mentioned the stories are just they just come out we'll, we'll, we, we'll be talking to somebody and it's just like well this is what I do on my ranch and this is what I do on my farm and it's like oh my gosh that is so cool. So we learn just lots and lots of things from folks that come by and give us new ideas and you know if you do it this way it would work better and we have to listen to that and make sure that we are really really listening and I picked up the phone yesterday and called our research and development comp our group in uh, New Zealand and I said you won't believe this is a great idea we've got to look at this and they said yep we do so and uh, so we're we're gonna make some changes and we're turning on a dime Gallagher has been around for like 85 years so we've been through a lot. We've been through all of the different economies worldwide. And so it's all about making sure that, that we're always reinventing, um, but moreover, listening. 
that's our big sustain. Well, absolutely. And I also would agree that it is the people and just hearing how everyone does yeah. something different, but still with the common goal and is, you know, there have been a lot of sustainability conversations here, sure. but what I really like is that conversation of it's necessary to make sure that, like you said, that next generation can come back and, yeah. you know, how important, but yet how exciting and fun to yeah. know that you can make to make take actions and make decisions now that we'll be able to do that. Well, that's it. And because the biggest issue is, and, and sometimes in a family organization, um, we we have um, yeah, mom and dad and, and maybe even grandparents that have been on a legacy farm and, you know, it's, it, they've, they've got a way of doing it. So it, the most successful are the ones that listen to their kids. <laughs> That's <laughs> tough because they've been doing it the same way forever. And when they come back and they bring new ideas, uh, it's, it's wonderful to hear the story of, yeah, dad, dad loved this idea. He wished that he'd been doing it the whole time, right? And so we're seeing those successes come through, and it, it, it's exciting to see the young folks come through. I, I can't believe how many uh, folks we've talked to that are, um, you know, they're in their 30s, and they're just so excited about life and, and what's, what's to happen, and they can see that they're going to be able to make it in this industry. So. Yeah, how remarkable. So tell me a little bit more about what you've been sharing in cattle yeah. chat sessions about the sustainability topic. Well, the, the sustainability um, is, is, is kind of broken down by three pillars, uh, the social, the economic, and the, uh, and the environmental. And, and how it relates to, to the cattle production is that, you know, in the social area, we, we're worried about worker safety and animal welfare, antibiotic use, um, and then, of course, technology, mm -hmm. and just the culture of traditions of beef production. And then when we talk about economics, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory when we're thinking about what we can do to improve rural economies, um, livelihoods and affordability of beef to, to consumers, and moreover, profitability of beef producers, uh, and just the whole value of the ecosystem of beef production. Um, it's a great to know that um, the beef farms and ranches represent over 30 percent of the farms in the U.S., and that's making up the single largest segment of the U.S. agriculture right now. It's, uh, it's amazing. And then environmentally, um, we need to give back to the land. We need to be able to, to preserve the ranch land that we do have by intensive grazing. Um, and just looking at the whole ecosystem of our, of our properties and making sure that we're doing the right thing. Um, keeping animals out of waterways and, you know, then rotationally graze all, all, th as much as we can. Um, uh, you know, we need to protect wildlife too. I mean, it, it, we need to keep them excluded or, you know, so we have more to work with. Um, so we worry about soil and rangeland health and, and plant growth health. But we utilize a, a lot of human and edible feeds too to make it work. And so there's less impact on you know we're reusing everything right so that's exciting stuff um, I mean Shay you could probably attest to some of these things that you've heard in the industry you've been around for a long time and um, I, I, I get really concerned when I hear some of these myths about you know cattle and mm -hmm. we have association with people that are they don't eat beef and it's like ah, they have misunderstandings well so I'm actually here at convention wrapping up my time as a trailblazer to which is in part with the beef checkoff as well as ncba and it's yeah. a year-long advocacy program so yeah i've really been spending the year really deep diving into that even though it's always intrigued me you know what are these misunderstandings and misconceptions and it is frustrating to know that people don't know the truth about beef whether it's nutritional like, you know, how healthy beef is for yeah. you, how nutrient dense it is, whether it's a conversation about beef and the environment, if it's greenhouse gas emissions, whatever it is that people are concerned about. And you know what? When I have the opportunity to talk to consumers who do have these concerns, yeah. because it does happen more frequently than you realize once you leave the ranch, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can still empathize with them because if they care about the environment, I can say, I care about the environment too. Yeah. Here's how I'm doing my part 
with cattle. And so that's how I kind of recommend to people to go about it because at the end of the day, they have the same concerns, but it's our job to share the right information with them. And I know it's frustrating when there is true misinformation being spread. Like, that's just not right. But we need to do our part to get the right information out yeah. there first. But at the end of the day, yeah, we've, we've all got, we're all humans and we all have similar concerns. We just need to share that. Well, and the thing about, you know, um, a conversation I had the other day with a, with, with a person, um, I told them what I did for a living and uh, said, oh, you know what, cattle are just the leading source of greenhouse emissions. I said, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> they represent maybe about 3.7% of gas emissions, but it's a very small part of that. and. Mm. I, I'm telling you, if you have a plant growth, you know, uh, or a, uh, a plant-based diet, uh, you're going to have more chemicals, you're going to have more, you know, fertilizers, or um, uh, pesticides, rather, and it's, it, and there's more erosion that, that occurs without cattle. Um, I just, I just get really frustrated when they just spew off this stuff, that they're just misinformed. And it's, it's not their, like you said, it's not their fault, it's just, there's a media campaign against it, and it's just awful. Um, you know... From water intake to the corn that they eat, I mean, we 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 see that the producers are using about 10 percent of of harvested corn, um, about eight million eight million acres of corn. Um, this lady the other day said, "Well, you know, it's uh, they, they, you know, 100 million acres of corn are being fed." Mm -hmm. No, it's not right. You know, um, we're more efficient, more sustainable than they could ever imagine. And that's, I think. You know, that's easiest, easier for us because we understand that that corn is not meant to be consumed right. by humans. And we understand the industry better, but we live in such a complex industry. Yeah. And I liken that to if, so I was on a plane a few months ago and I was talking about what I was doing. Well then, people had questions for me about the beef industry. Well then, someone else was in like, the transportation industry and I had questions for them about it which they probably thought were kind of stupid questions but if you're not in the same industry it, it's hard to understand because each industry is complex and can be yeah absolutely and if you think about it um, we are the world leader in uh, beef, beef supply at 18% of the world beef supply and we do it with 6% of the world cattle it's just, it's just crazy cool. And with that comment that you made about the transportation and, and uh, the other, uh, the, what was the other? You, men you mentioned that you were having a conversation about it on the plane with somebody and, uh, uh, and they were in the industry, the, the transportation industry. It, I wonder if they realized that some of the byproducts of cattle help that all work. Like there's <laughs> lubricants and Leather seats. Leather seats. <laughs> <laughs> the hydraulic, the hydraulic brake fluids and bio, dio, bio uh, diesel rather and medicines, but m I I didn't know this till recently. But we use a byproduct for airplane um, hydraulic lubricants. Mm -hmm. it, it's just crazy, um, and all the things that we there isn't a single part. The the cow is the most efficient and sustainable animal on the planet because we have made it that way and we have utilized and found great ways to utilize all of the things that we we harvest out of an animal. Absolutely and what more how much more I mean that's something to be proud of yeah for beef producers but I do believe we need to do I know people are tired of saying or hearing tell your story tell your story tell your story yeah. but it is our job it is we, we're marketing that we're marketing yeah. our product we need to do that too it's just uh, you need to find what works for you and how you share your story. That's right. That's right. So we keep on keeping on and talking about the good things that um, we can do right with with, uh, with animal production. And Gallagher has um, really focused on on-farm um, technology that allows the producer to do more with less. And from intensive grazing, uh, water management, we're coming out with a new water um, detection system that allows us to see volumes in the in the field, and 
by satellite and apps that allow us to manage our entire herd from a dashboard. Um, and then really, really good data-driven at-shoot um, data management there, making sure that we're making the best, best possible decisions with our animals. Um, and it's just, it's equating to a, a better economy with our, with our producers. Yeah, absolutely. So Ray, as we kind of wrap up today, you know, we've talked about sustainability and where producers can start with that as far as having the technology to record the data on their animals so that they know yeah. what that cost of production is, where does their break even, what can they do to lower input cost or increase profitability, whatever they can do to not make that margin so tight for themselves. Yeah. And we've also talked about looking at caring for the environment full circle and either conserving our resources or regenerating depleted resources through grazing, making sure waterways are there, being, making sure we have diverse ecosystems with wildlife, whatever it may be. And so what, what other take-home message do you want to leave with listeners as they think about their role in sustainability in our beef industry? Well, there's, there's a lot of information out there for us to really absorb and learn about. And I think that um, the companies that are, that are really supporting the industry are thinking that way as well. So we're all um, teaching and coaching and, and observing and listening to what makes the most sense for each. As everybody has a different situation on mm -hmm. their farm or ranch. But they have to just think in terms of what can I do that can make it faster, easier, and less timely. I want, I want, I want a life, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they they need family and they need that that connection, and it's it's a lot of hard work. But what can we do to make it easier, faster, and more efficient, and more profitable at the end of the day? Absolutely, because it all does. We talk about profitability a lot, but it, it goes back to that lifestyle too. It does. Because if you want your next generation to come back. Yes. They have to want to come back and know that they still can take a break and be a human and That's take care right. of themselves because that is important. <laughs> it is literally the most important part of I all mean, this. Beef farmers and ranchers are going to work hard no matter what, no matter what. Yeah. But we need to be better about taking breaks and showing yeah. the next generation that this is one of the best lifestyles you can ever live. Good life balance. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Ray, do you have any other parting thoughts before we uh, wrap up? And well, you? I just appreciate you, you taking time with me today, and I, I'm just thrilled to be here. And, uh... and that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.